I was invited to see this building for the first time five years ago. And at the time, it was just a really beautiful, but very rusted out hull of a building. And it was very exciting to me that this building was, could be saved or that something interesting could happen here. This was the state of the art of manufacturing beginning of the 1900s and also during both world wars. And we thought in a very kind of heavy-handed, representative and you know, symbolic way, what does that mean for today? New Lab is a collaborative workspace that strives to be a great resource for companies working in very specific verticals. So robotics, connected devices, artificial intelligence, nano, and medical. Honeybee Robotics is a company that uh, designs and builds custom robotic systems for clients who can't find something commercially available off the shelf. So we work with NASA and the Defense Department and also private customers to build them robots specific for their application. But here in New York, we've been focusing a little bit more on minimally invasive medical devices uh, and also robots for the energy and infrastructure sector. They're not directly replacing people the way assembly line robots are. Instead, we try to have our systems enhance or extend people's capabilities. So you always have a human in the loop, but the robot is doing something that helps them do it more effectively. You walk into this facility and it's like a cathedral to design and manufacturing. You feel the history of 100 years of innovation and you're surrounded by some really smart people who are working on you know, interesting, I think important projects. And so being surrounded by people who understand different elements of design, human factors, material science, uh, fabrication, the supply chain, it's very valuable and you get these network effects that help us be more effective solving problems for our customers. There's many resources in New York for software companies, but for companies that are trying to make hardware, there aren't as many resources and the resources don't have the type of tools and community that we think are needed. So New Lab is trying to be kind of an independent uh, you know, area where people can come and they can prototype and innovate together and really be very effective in getting their products to market. An industrial athlete is the individual that most people call blue collar worker, but we find them individuals that take pride in the work. People that are delivering the package to your door, that are building the buildings that we're standing in, that are building the stadiums that our heroes, the actual athletes, are actually playing on. We build a number of things, mostly focused on the health and wellness for those individuals. What we have, our bread and butter right now, is ergo skeletons, designed to specifically reduce lower lumbar injuries that are costing about $90 billion a year in the United States in workman's comp claims. I wanted to focus on an idea that actually had meaning. When you go in and you give someone an ergoskeleton and they say, well, I'm not wearing a jetpack, and then at the end of the week you come back and they won't give it to you, there's nothing more inspiring than that. The supporting nature of the hardware community here, the ability to meet with really like-minded people but in totally different industries, they're all just great people to network with. So that in addition with the, the resources and the, the amount of companies that are here, it's been great. Nanotronics take the, I think, the latest convergence in uh, super resolution microscopy, artificial intelligence, and robotics to really change the way that industry works. You know, we say a microscope, but it's imaging in general. You could think of imaging as playing a role in every part of a factory. Everything we do now is small. The first conversation I had with them, I don't remember whether it was nanotronics based or new lab based. What I really love about it is the ability to see and, you know, and feel the brick and mortar of the past and then step out and everybody who's doing something here is doing something for the future. We really believe that we should launch new ideas in old buildings. It gives a level of kind of authenticity and groundedness. But I don't think I've ever seen anywhere else in New York City, a building with this stature, with 70-foot ceilings that was used for this purpose that was so inspiring to the companies that we have here. So we could have built something. We couldn't have built something, I think, as interesting as this.